Dead Cells is the challenging roguelike that mixes in a bunch of different popular game mechanics, but at its core is a smooth, fast-paced, satisfying action platformer that's set on a sinister island that is constantly changing. You play as a parasite that has taken over the body of a recently executed prisoner, and your goal is to make your way across the island through the various stages known as biomes, before hopefully, eventually, earning yourself your freedom. But to do this, it's going to take a lot of death along the way. Each failed attempt means that Mr. Parasite has to make his way back to the prison to find a new host to have another go at taking on the ever shape-shifting challenge. On the surface, it plays like a Metroidvania game, having you quickly darting around a 2D map that's often as vertical as it is horizontal. Each level's aim is to find an exit to get you to the next biome, but along the way you also end up searching for new weapons, shops and upgrades to power you up, to help you take on the hordes of enemies that stand in the way. There's also new permanent moves to learn, such as the ability to grow vines up that lets you access new areas, and the fact that this upgrade is permanent, regardless of whether you die or not, is important, because it means that even if you do die from that point on, you'll keep this extra move to explore more of the map with, and so potentially have more opportunity to level up, find new items, new exits, all hopefully helping you make it further than you did last time around. It's a colourful island that changes each and every time you play, but there are some things that will always stay the same. The overall order of the levels is fixed, and each level always sticks to its own kind of unique basic layout. For example, the Promenade of the Condemned level is always a fairly linear path out in the open air, but then it's got these underground sections to explore along the way, in the hope of finding something that's worth the risk of going down for. Stilt Village, on the other hand, will always have buildings that you can go into to try and find keys to unlock the way forward, so even though a biome is randomly generated, you always kind of know what to expect from it. When you die, as annoying as it is that you've got to go back to the start, there's also an extra sting in the tail. You see, as you go, you earn a currency called Dead Cells, which can be used to permanently unlock new weapons and mutations that are added to the roster of things that you can randomly find on a run. But you can only spend these Dead Cells after completing a stage, so dying on a stage means that all your unspent cells are lost forever. It adds to that risk-reward nature of the game, because to make it far, you probably need to make a lot of dangerous decisions and search every nook and cranny for the upgrades. But of course, exploring ups the risk of you dying and losing everything that you've earned up until that point on the level. All of these mechanics make up the skeleton of the game, but the real meat on the bones here is the great controls. Your fast movement, responsive, flowing platforming, and that catchy music makes you want to breeze about, slashing away and taking things out like wildfire. But you should always err on the side of caution, planning your attacks in the often claustrophobic corridors and mastering that dodge roll. It's fun to pick up and play, and because your special moves only take a couple of seconds to cool down, they become a major part of your attacks, rather than just something you save for a boss fight. And depending upon what you find on a route, you'll always be switching strategies to find out what works best with what, whether it's something that does more damage to frozen enemies, or a sword that can shoot arrows. It's this fact that every run is that bit different, along with the nice flowing control, that makes you want to keep coming back to this game, always hoping to make that perfect run when everything goes your way. Once you start to unlock all of the weapon blueprints, every run is varied, with you having to make decisions about where you want to go, how you want to level up, but in the end, it's often your own skill as a player that determines whether you make it, or have to go crawling back to the prison to find a new body to try it all over again with. As always, thank you for watching. Bye.